This is the best or worst podcast. And now, here are your hosts, Koji Steven Sakai and M. Martin Mapoma. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the best or worst podcast, episode number 37. I am Martin. Koji. And today we have someone that I've been dying to have on for a long time. Good friend of mine, an amazing person, writer, director, you name it, Jen Salata. Hey, Jen. Hi, everyone. Hi. I'm How so excited you? to be here. Good. I'm really excited to be here. Oh, so I wanted to talk to you guys for a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially during these times right now. I'm, oh. I'm, I'm so psyched to have you here. This is, this oh. is going to be a lot of fun. This is going to be like best hour ever. So yeah. no offense to anybody. <laughs> no pressure. Other, uh, no guess. pressure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, so how have well, you been? To be clear, best 40 minutes. Or... <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. I'm just 40 minutes? Oh, you don't get the full hour. You got to no, get a half 40 we're, minutes. Yeah, we're about 42. Because <laughs> uh, I have 60 minutes of things to say, so I don't know what you're going to do. You're going to have to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so how have you been, Jen? Talk to us. I'm good. I'm good. I've been like, yeah, I've been working a, li- a lot um, on a project. I'm working on an animated movie. I'm just starting development with it for Netflix, and I'm really excited about it. And uh, it's unusual to be working in these times. It feels very, I feel very pulled in a million directions and very hard to focus. I'm usually a person who, once I get into something I can kind of go and just the focus that you have to have for it is is in my process is pretty intense but when the world seems like it's exploding (laughs) or has been exploding for a long time but now it's rising it's bubbling to the surface um it's hard for me to uh rightly so hard for me to focus on something that even though I'm passionate about it it doesn't feel uh it feels unimportant unimportant at times and it's you know that's weird for me to say but i just feel like everything else is so much bigger it's just big so i'm feeling a lot of emotions and i feel waves even before everything sort of bubbled up with uh the protests and uh police brutality the a millionth version of police brutality but even after before that even in just sort of the pandemic i felt like there were waves of i feel totally normal and then waves of like crazy emotional stressed you know winging out um i told rain wilson who plays dwight on the office i told him i developed a new startle response that i'll drop anything like even a sock and i'll go like oh my god (laughs) he sent me a text a voice text that said hey jen how are you Ah!" And then he just screamed <laughs> and I jumped, I jumped so strong because I'm just, and then, yeah. And then just with all the heartbreak of the last uh, several weeks, which just compounds the heartbreak that, you know, people of color and people in America have been feeling for so long. I just, uh, you know, writers can be sensitive people. And so I'm yeah. just, I, I feel very, very torn and very sad and I'm starting to feel tiny little glimpses of hope but i feel like screw you no, it's too early to feel hope we got work to do that, yeah. that's me yeah, yeah, yeah I, 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 I think oh sorry good i was gonna say and you and you know jen you're really good at what you do too so um i'm not sure if i said at the top of the hour but i'm gonna you know <laughs> you know you oh, talk right. about writing and did <laughs> comedies did i mention that you're a writer and director jen am i going crazy yeah. you did you did mention okay. the writer director you totally okay. did <laughs> It's quar- it's quarantine brain. Yeah, um, it is. But yeah, I'm a writer and director. I, I did the, I wrote The Office and I ran it fifth season with a guy who plays Toby. Um I've written on uh I directed some episodes of Cobra Kai, did one each season. Uh I wrote a little bit on Space Force. I helped them out for a few months. Uh I'm liking it. Yeah, I'm excited. I, I, I can't I'm help excited. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure Steve is great and, and Greg is great. I haven't gotten to see it yet, but um, but it sounds like it's it's really fun. But yeah. you know what it is about that show that I like is it's very it's very highbrow. Ah, uh, yeah, it is. I mean, there's a lot of subtlety to it. Like some of the jokes that just, I mean, John Malkovich is is hilarious. What a genius. And I can't wait to see it because I left, I only worked there for a couple of months. I left right before he got cast and like just yeah. imagining Karel and Malkovich. Like I'm just oh, like, this is a so dream. Good. So yeah, so I'm good. excited just, for them. He just deadpans everything that Steve yeah. Carell's character says. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Part what? of what we watched when we were trying to uh, cast was him on Saturday Night Live reading a Christmas story to kids. If you haven't seen that or haven't seen her lately, it is so funny. Wow. <laughs> it is so Are the funny. Are traumatized? Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> so you were <laughs> saying something? Yes. 
No, no, I was just going to say that, you know, I, th I think even even during this time, we need we do need, you know, to be entertained. We need to. So, so I, I think it's OK to because I mean, I, I'm writing, too. And, and you know, it's, I do feel the same thing. But, you know, ultimately, it's yeah. like like life will go on, you know, but but I do think the next five months is going to be worse than, than the current time anyway. So I do, too. I mean, when, when you ask, uh, when you ask like Biden on the Trevor Noah show, when you ask Biden if, if, uh, if he's confident that, you know, that he's not going to try to steal the election or, oh, if, yes. or if he's not going to, um, if he's going to leave willingly, you know, that's like, that. like if, if I asked that like, tw like eight years ago or 12 years ago or 16 years ago, you would say like, that would be ridiculous. Right. Yeah. yeah and but, he had an answer for that. Yeah, he was he like ready to it. say the military. He thought about it. So I'm like, yeah, yeah I, of course he's going to not, he's not going to leave. There's no going to be, not going to be any tre peaceful transfer of power. And yeah. I was, I was listening to Pod Save America last night. And this guy, Dan Pfeiffer was talking about how, uh, he feels like there is a chance, he doesn't want this obviously, but there's a chance that the Biden numbers, which are so high right now, might, when things start to open back up, the economy might start to recover and he might just have a little bit, he might have more like, he's seven and a half points ahead now, he might have more like a three point lead and he's yeah. like, three points is not enough. It will be a bare victory in some places, like even places yeah. that we, you know, in 2016 where, or, where, or 20, Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 2016. Yeah, yeah. It's like it was just bare. It was just yeah. barely. So but, we have to. But you have, you have to also understand that I think um, by ju end of July, right? That's when all the benefits end. So I think that we're going right, to right. go off the cliff at that point, unless unless right. they pass, unless they pass something that you know, because I mean, everyone's getting uh, the six hundred dollars extra if they got out of job, right. and they're Are you also getting uh, that, Koji. What? Are you getting that? Yeah, yeah. Because I got furloughed from um, the museum job I had. So it's, it's been awesome, but uh, but because um, I'm <laughs> you know still right, I'm, st I'm still working. But then the uh, the other thing is the uh, the student loans and the um, yes. mortgage forgiveness has all been done. It's all coming back right. in July, and then right. you know, so I mean, like how many? I, I think it's like what thirty percent of the people have student loans that they pay and rent. And right. No, that, you're right. I forgot so. about student loans. Yeah, I and forgot about that. That's crazy. All, that, all the evictions could start again in August. So I mean, I think yep. I think yep. we're about to go off a clip, I think. And, and you know, I, you're right. I really want to believe that. I think on both sides, you know, Republicans and Democrats, I think everybody just, just wants to get this guy out of here. I, I, I oh, want to yeah, I agree. Him. I mean, I have friends of mine who are pretty conservative who are like, he's just got to go. He's just, yeah. he's just, he's like this cancer in everything, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, I read you know, there, it's another, oh, go ahead, sorry. No, I was just going to say, you know, he's like this cancer that, you know, it was affecting a few people for a while, but then it, like, you know, like any other cancer, it just spreads. And now it's just, you know, it's just, Oh God! I, I, I think you're, I think he will, but I think it's like I have two thoughts. One is like the American <laughs> American Idol. <laughs> when I used to watch American Idol, you'd have the person who could clearly sing, and everybody would assume they were safe because you couldn't imagine they weren't safe. So they're yeah. like, I don't need to go yeah. out there, especially if there's coronavirus out there, right? And they can't do the mail-in voting. If there's yeah. any of that, I know Stacey Abrams is working incredibly hard to like <laughs> to push for that everywhere, and so many people are trying to get that pushed really hard, but like. If there's any feeling that like other that it's so bad that it'll be okay and people don't show up, I, yeah. I or or you have like the, in Georgia you have you know people waiting till three in the morning to vote because oh, they were hell bent. there's no places in their precinct, which is like, yeah. and Mitch McConnell's in a battle in Kentucky, you know where I went to college. Oh yeah, you know, and I'd love to see that guy go. I'd love oh, to see that yeah. guy go. You know, it's yeah. uh, it's nuts. Well, there Jen, was one. There was um, one positive thing. I was going to say there's one positive thing again. I, I think I heard on Positive America. I'm just listening to a lot of political podcasts lately. But they said that you wouldn't have imagined six months ago that there would be a coalition for Biden that included, uh, you know, uh, yeah, at W, Mitt Romney, yeah. Alexandra Ocasio Ortez, and like, yeah. and I can't remember the fourth one. But I was like, yeah, this is crazy. <laughs> Did you see Mitt Romney marching in the Black Lives Matter protest? That blew me yes. away. Yes. No, but his, no, but yes. no, not really, because his dad was a uh, his dad was one of the biggest people fighting for uh, for civil rights in the sixties. His dad I was like a that. his dad was a hero. So. <laughs> you know, it's amazing. I mean, it's amazing because so he got a he got a tiny bit of that. It just yeah. pre it presented itself. No, now. I, I think with <laughs> Mitt, I think with Mitt that like from what, everything I've ever heard about him, he's always been this way. Like personally, oh. like when people talk to him, he's always had this like this thing but i think that right. like over time especially when he was running it was he kind of like mccain back in the 
yeah, 2008. What, what he kind of like, be. he wanted more, he went more right than I think he really is. I mean, he's, he's yeah. from like, he, like Massachusetts is like California, right? It's very, right, I mean, right. Massachusetts Republicans are like California. So it's like, okay, well, they're Republican, but they're kind of like Democrats. I mean, you right. know, um, and, and I, I think Mitt has always been like that, but I think the portrayal of him has always been like that he's, he's super far right. But I do want to, I do want to mention that. Done to make him, that was done to make him appeal to, you know, the far right. I think that's what it was. I really yeah, do. Of well, no, that's what, I mean, that's what in primary elections, you, you move, you know, you move to the extremes of your party and then you, in the generals, you move back, right? That's even, right, right, even right. Barack Obama, yeah. that's, well, that's, that's, that's right. everybody does that. Yeah, I, you know, with, with everything that's happened, you know, I I wasn't a fan of Bush when he was in, in, in president, but after everything he's done since he left office, I mean, he has three charities running in Zambia, and my brother mm. works in the USA and has met him a few times, and he goes, "You got to see this guy, man! It's incredible." I have yeah. a newfound respect for him, and he's saying he is. You cannot say a bad word about George Bush in Southern Africa mm. because of the number of lives that he was instrumental in saving because he made the AIDS drug free. Yeah, that pissed but, off a lot of pharmaceutical the, companies. The number and, of people he died, though, <laughs> in Iraq. Huh? I know. The number I know. of people died in Iraq. Like, no, no, but hey, but you know, I know, it's, all, it's, I know. it's all relative, though. I mean, I'm serious. It's I mean, both. It can be both, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, Look at Koji with the what about what about isms? Come on, man. No, you no, know, I mean yeah, but, that that was singularly the like one of the worst decisions in the in the twenty. I mean, in American history, in the last like hundred years, is, yeah, is our our involvement. That was a bad one too. Wait, which one? Clinton and Rwanda, you know, that was a bad one too. No, 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 but I'm talking about just a number of lives. I mean, on, yeah. on, you know, like, I mean, we've, we've killed so many people in both those countries and we've yeah. de destabilized that entire region no, in I ways that I like, I mean, Rwanda is like one thing, but this is like, I mean, you know. Yeah, and, okay. and, it's a, just, it, it, it will go down in history, it's a disaster, but I also feel like there's, a dis, there's an uncomfortable holding of multiple things. The fact yeah. that that was his path and oh, horrible. Yes, I agree. It's one of the worst things in American history. And yeah. then you have that there's the ability to do this. And I do think sometimes people change and grow. Sometimes I think, and even at a later age, which is remarkable, but sometimes I feel like there is um, that political pressure we we're talking about to be so far right. And what I just love is that the protests and the people in the street are giving sometimes they need the, the political cover to say that now if 83 percent of america think that like priest police brutality is insane right if finally people marching in the street get that some of the republicans that are hiding in the fences can realize their constituents are going to be thinking this so even yeah. if they're sort of doing the cowardice thing of feeling like Mitt Romney one way but having to act another way in order to keep their job they can get the cover from the so it's like on us right yeah. it's on us it is and you know, I'll tell you when history is written I mean there's a there's a lot of people out there who are just missing the boat on this you know like for example that police oh. captain in New York City who knelt with the protesters and then came back and said it was oh, yes, yes yes I was God. like dude God. you yeah. had a moment I know we could have gone down in history as like a game changer <laughs> you totally backpedaled for a brief respite from this, He's getting pressure. I'm like, how do you? How and the same you... pressure that pushed all those cops to retire as exactly. soon as the 75 year old man, I've forgotten his name. That horrible, thing was but... horrible. Michael Gugino or something like yeah, that. Yeah, he goes down and 75 people, you know, he, oh, he, he, he tripped, he fell. No, right. It's, yeah. But anyway, that being said, no, all right. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm... No, I know. We can, and we can come back to it, but we're at that okay. point in the show where we decide, Koji and I do. If we're going to ask you about the best moment of your life or the worst moment of your life and you're so bubbly i it's so good to see you oh it's so good to see you jen. i love jen coach i if you have noticed coach but um what do you think coach i love martin oh, oh you don't even hear anything you just decide without no without oh yeah that's the best yeah. part yeah we decided <laughs> and, and i don't know ah, jen's like what the <laughs> I love it. You told me this, and I have not listened. I'm like, I know. only listening to political podcasts now. I I uh, I can't wait to watch yours. But. And Jen, one of the thing ones that I, I have you heard? Uh, do you listen to Ezra Klein's podcast? No, I know about it, and it's on my life. Have to, that, have to that's listen, that's listen. the best. I mean, I think this. I mean, I love Pod Save America, but I think it's way yeah, better than Pod Save America. Favorite. It's not oh. even. It's not even close because I think those fighting words. All right, no, I'm in. I'm in. Because I'm in. because that's Ezra crazy. Ezra does a better job of of making. I mean, because like. In Pod Save America, they're so, um, they're so, they're so like, like they're, they're clear what side they're on. Yes, I where, agree. I agree. Or Ezra, like Ezra's on yep. like quote our side, but he brings on a yes. lot of people that are not. And I love a, that. He yeah, a, so do I. So and do he I. does a really good job of like yeah. having these really deep conversations that like really change the way, like way I believe. Whereas when I listen to Pod Save America, it's like it's just 
you reinforcing you what I, the same way you went it in. reinforces what I already believe. Yeah. But when I listen to like um, Ezra, that's no way to grow. He explains no. to me why like conservatives are different than liberals, and yeah. this conservative guy comes on and explains what he's thinking about, and how they look at like these very like important issues. And so Ezra is like, I mean, Ezra's clear, like he he has podcasts that I think are like that have literally changed my thinking on. on I the I issue. want that so much more. You know? I keep asking for smart conservative yeah. people. I want to hear the other side, not yeah, from the dumbasses. And, and I cannot stand when CNN or whatever puts up a straw man, and then it's just like, yeah. what are we doing? Like yeah. I I want to hear in order to get to a moderate place and a medium place, I need to hear the other side, and yeah. I need to hear the smart version of the other side. Yeah. Yeah. And, hey, and, you know what? Speaking that's of what that, Mitt Romney, if you're listening to this, I want to have Mitt Romney yeah. on the show. Okay. <laughs> do it. Do it. I would love yeah. to have Mitt on the show. So for as far as the best or worst, yeah. so we, we always uh, we always tell people make sure you know don't tell us like when you met your husband or wife or don't right, right, don't talk right, about yeah. children because those are those are the easy ones those are the no, ones yeah, that yeah, are yeah, clearly no, no. like things that people yeah no like, I'm locked and loaded with both so okay. you, you let me know I, <laughs> I didn't right. have I didn't have one of them as of last night and then uh, and then now I have it but uh, I had I had a clear favorite of one of the two and then I thought of one for the other so okay, okay. I would I would love to hear the 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 worst but but Martin what oh. do you want to hear. I'm open. But you can choose because you've known you've known Jen longer than I have, so you should you should choose. I feel like you should be the one that makes the ultimate decision. You know, we. we you, uh, oh, jeez, man! Now I'm confused because Jen's so happy. I don't. I feel like I don't. Wanna, I'm okay. I'm okay I with. I don't. I don't want her to relive a bad moment. That's what. I, that's spoiler. What I, spoiler. Uh, the bad moment has uh, humor in it. <laughs> okay. I want the worst moment of your life. The worst All moment. Right, here's the problem. Here's where I got to preface it with this. I got to preface it with this. Oh, even more so now. <laughs> no. Okay. All right. So, like, I was leaning towards the best moment because I'll just. T can I tell you a tiny like just what that what the topic of the best moment was? Or yeah, no? of course. Of All course. Right. The topic was I was alone on an island called Kumejima near Okinawa uh, we're, we're, and I was walking in an area where by myself and like walking in an area with like deadly habu snakes and like ended up meeting the per this was the this was this was the best ended up meeting one of the people who was alive in World War II um, in the jungle was hiding for like seven years thinking the war was still going on like okay. that was that I, I that was changed like, my answer uh, I want to know let's go to the best <laughs> that was well. the, worst, the worst one had a white girl being pulled over by a cop part of the no, story no 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 <laughs> where he let me go because I cried and I yeah. genuinely cried you, you know they call that day he was scared of me he was scared of me you know they call that scared. in the hood Jen Tuesday <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, you know, Koji obviously has, a, has an affinity for Japan. And I literally, when you started uh, talking, I'm like, oh, I've got to hear that story too. So all right, all right, let's go right, with that right. one. All right, all right. we're listening. So, okay. I'm going to mute myself. Let me uh, and I, okay, I'm just going to try to be cohesive. I try not to like think about it too much in advance because I oh, get that too just boring. So, okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, I went to, I went to go visit my friend in Tokyo and uh, I took a trip um, by myself to go to Okinawa. And this was when I, you know, maybe 20 years ago or so. And uh, when I was going to Okinawa, I had a little like photos guidebook or something. And I saw that there was this island called Kumejima. And uh, they said, uh, Kumejima is beautiful, but you have to go during, don't go during the rainy season. It's a disaster during the rainy season. And it was supposed to be the rainy season, but it was beautiful and sunny out. So I was like, screw it, let's go. I, uh, I land in, I, I get to Okinawa, so I take a train to Okinawa, and I take a flight, I think it was like $70 for the day, and I'm like, I'm going to this little island for the day, I'm just going to do it, I, I, I think, what the heck, I'm just going to do it. So I know nothing except for, uh, it says Kumejima, you don't want to go in its rainy season, there's a hotel called Eve Beach, uh, and be careful about the deadly habu snake. If you talk to locals, you will think it will kill you. It won't really kill you, <laughs> necessarily. It doesn't always kill you. That's all I knew. It was that much. It was like four sentences in Fodor's book. So I land. It's beautiful. It's sunny. I get, nobody speaks English at all except for one person I'll, later, I'll tell you. Um, and so I get in uh, a cab. It's an island. It looks tiny from, from, the, uh, from the plane. So I, but I get in a cab on, on the island. And I say Eve Beach because that's the only thing I know. There's a hotel on Eve Beach. There's maybe one hotel on the island. So the cab driver starts going and going and going further and further. And I, I like, where, <laughs> you know, where am I? You know, I've got a, I've got a flight out in six hours. I'm just here in the, you know, for for the day for this adventure and exploring. And uh, so I get to this hotel, 
and I'm on the outside of the hotel. I go, I go to ask, you know, can I, can I go into your hotel? Can I have lunch? Can I, whatever? They're like, no, we're closed. They're very lovely in Japanese. I, I don't speak any Japanese. I learned like 15 phrases. So I said, can you get, is there a place I can walk? He's like, yeah, no, sure. You know, it gives me a, a map. So I start walking and I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking. There's like the first thing is a rice patty uh, I'm supposed to hit. And I'm about two hours into the walk and I have not hit the rice patty. And I realized it's a driving map and I don't know what the scale is. And I, again, I thought this island was small. So I'm just walking and I'm just this, you know, just nobody, no cars, no people, no nothing. And again, I'm just gonna remind everyone this is my best day. <laughs> I just, I just I, there was something so beautiful and so magical about this and such an adventure. I felt so safe. I, I felt so, uh, Japan was just like the loveliest place. But I also was like, here I am two hours into this walk. The sky is open. It is pouring. It pours. It becomes rainy season. I, I've never had such a quick transition from beautiful to pouring rain. I just start thinking deadly habu snake. That's all I can think, right? Because I know three <laughs> things. I know eat beach. I know you don't want to be there in the rain. And you don't have deadly habu snake. So now, it, the, the stakes are upped a little bit because I'm walking through this like uh, kind of dirt road. There's um, maybe rice stuff going on over here, but I certainly haven't seen the hut that was on the map. So <laughs> I, I keep walking. I Then I see a hut finally. I'm about three hours into my walk. So now I've got about three or four hours till I got to get back to the airport. So I'm already calculating like, How's this going to go down? Like, I, I should probably turn around and go back to the hotel. But at this point, I, I feel like I'm going to get pretty close to this. There's a, like a metal sort of hut. Um, and I walk in and there's two young women, maybe in their 20s, like gorgeous Japanese women who are working on like Hewlett Packard computers from like, <laughs> I don't know, like uh, it reminded me of old style computers, but also in the middle of a rice paddy in, you know, I, I don't. They see this tall blonde girl coming in out of the rain, I'm pouring wet. They're kind of like, what the heck? Like, what the hell? Like, where? And I think they're, they're startled, right? As they should be. They're like, what the hell is going on? So I, I try to have a conversation with them and they want to tell me, I, I, I show my ticket. Like, cause now at this point, I'm like, gotta get back to the airport. I should get back to the airport. So they're like, no, no, you really should see, you need to see our area. It's beautiful. <laughs> I'm thinking, cause I, I I, I don't, I, I'm nervous now, right? Because I'm, I've been on this three hour walk. So we're talking for a while. They're the loveliest people. I feel very calm. I feel very like, I don't know, everywhere in Japan, I just felt very like meditative. It was before I was in a meditation, but I just felt very calm and peaceful. They were such calming presence. They were so smart. They were just full of love and full of uh, goodness. And, uh, uh, but they were, they really wanted me to experience. Cause like how often nobody comes there. They like never, like nobody, nobody certainly comes there on foot, but like it was just in the middle of nowhere. So they said like, you know, they wanted me to experience it. I felt like I didn't have time. So I'm sure I was like not correct about this, but they called me a cab. So I get in the cab, I get back to the airport. I now have three hours left to go. I'm like, I can't just sit around here for three hours. I got to go exploring. So I get out of the airport, I walk around, and I decide to see the ocean near the airport. So I kind of like, again, it's like any reasonable person would just be stay put, just sit down in the airport, wait for your flight. <laughs> so I go, and I'm walking through this kind of rocky uh, area, again, maybe a mile from the airport. See, the most beautiful ocean I've ever seen was just beautiful rocks and beautiful like just the, the, the crystal is crystal clear water it's just so unspoiled and untouched on the way back i pay attention a little bit more to all these signs that i'm seeing i don't quite know what these signs are so i take pictures of them i uh get back to the airport anyway i had this like beautiful moment i just i don't know it's like one of those times where when i was sitting out there i skipped ahead to the signs but when i'm sitting out there and looking at the water i'm sitting on a rock it's just I don't know. It just, you feel, it, I just felt at, at peace. I just felt like everything, uh, I'm not great at sitting still sometimes. And I just felt like, I don't know. Yeah. You know, I'm just, I felt at peace. So I, I get back to the airport. I start talking to somebody at the snack bar who in the airport, this tiny, tiny little, like, you know, almost like vendor. 
and he speaks English. It was the first person I had spoken English to. And I think part of not really speaking English was lovely too. It was just a break from everything. It was just like to disappear and, you know, have lovely interactions with people, but just to kind of, I don't know, get away from things. I feel like I was stressed going into this moment too. And I can't remember exactly the things that were freaking me out, but like I was, it was a beautiful moment. So I showed him the signs and he's like, oh, uh, 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 oh, oh, <laughs> no, no, no. Like all of those signs said unexploded landmines. <laughs> so, so I, when I was going, it's like, that's a warning. And I don't know, I, I, I was so excited to see the ocean that when you look back at the signs, it's pretty clear that it should it was like an internet it was not like maybe a red explanation point but it was something that i should have known like don't go there oh, but it was like so some of that area had been checked you know uh maybe princess diana or somebody had swept through there and done like a landmine check of the area you know but like that that there was some i remember hearing about some group that helped it like notably but they had missed some and that area was like notorious for do not go Anyway, so in the anyway. last moment, so I'm about to get on the plane, I uh, go back uh, to Okinawa, and the snack bar guy says, hey, you know, uh, guess who's on your flight? And uh, I said, who? And he said, that guy over there, and I'm, I should have looked this up, I'm forgetting his name, was one of the three soldiers who was the last, who was the last um, uh, people out in World War II. They were hiding in the woods and they thought that the war 60 minutes did a thing on them they thought that the war was still going on so they were in the woods for i think like seven years or something after the war was over and every time they uh heard a plane overhead they thought it was you know they didn't realize it was a could be a private plane or commercial plane their commander said you do not come out you do not surrender unless I tell you to surrender. So these three soldiers were in the woods for like seven years after the war was over. Um, and they, I, I should have checked with these guys, I'm sorry. Um, but it was in years and years and years. And so they would go around and this guy was the last guy alive and he would, uh, who, of the three, and they would go around and talk to school kids in Japan about how they existed, how they survived, how they dealt with the fact that they didn't want to give up. They didn't want to give in, but they also like, you know, um, had to survive. And they, so they wouldn't talk about what they ate. Like they just, there were things oh. that they just didn't want to discuss, but they, remember, um, yeah. And I think probably they blocked a lot of stuff out, oh, wait. but were these people on the Island or were they from the Philippines? Because they were, um, I, they, uh, he was, um, Japanese, but I don't know where he, I okay. don't know. Uh, I do, he wasn't from the islands. He was just traveling around to school children on Got the it. island. Okay. Talking Cause, to them. Cause the three guys were from the Philippines and they stayed till the seventies. They went the all 70s. the way to the 70s, yeah. What? And then they, and then yeah, they were- so I was going to say, Koji they're, definitely they're, knows the story. My friend's writing a feature about, about these guys. No but, way! But, um, Wait, so, but he was Japanese, correct? I mean, he yeah, they're Japanese, Japanese, but they're in the okay, Philippines. Like, and and they, were, they were killing villagers, and they were killing a lot of people, because they were still in a war. And they're, they're stealing, oh, yes, yes, like, yes. Oh, yes, they're yes, stealing yes. like food, and they're killing people. Uh, and everyone, everyone knew that they existed, but they didn't know how to get them until they brought the- they brought the his commander back from he was like back to tell him it's over right yeah, to tell him yeah. like to stand down or something and then he yeah. finally and the other people have died but yeah it was it was crazy and, and they so were, they I were totally, in charge yeah wow, I, you forgot, that guy. I forgot how long they were in there i forgot where they were stationed where they didn't come out yeah but i knew they were going around and talking to japanese children and i know this was the oldest of them and he was the most lovely man and i i i went up to him and I, I just said like hello and I like felt this instinct because I knew this is just the Jewish girl in me I was like I wanted to offer him my peanuts like I just wanted to get like, he, like that like that's gonna help him he's not still hungry it's been Jen. forever but I was just like I want to feed this man he went through so much like I just want to I want to do you know something guy, and you know he's thinking is this bitch offering me peanuts what is this bitch doing <laughs> we cursed we didn't curse till here but like, yeah, no you like, can say that out, right feel, yeah. But like I had mean... that, so it was the most, it was the most beautiful, and I apologize for not looking any of those facts up. It was like the most magical moment, and I, it, all of the fact part of it just escaped my brain. But the idea of being having this day that was so cut off, not from humanity, the beautiful humanity, but not having to like somehow not being sucked down by English, like helped me. And then the one moment of English was 
those were landmines, <laughs> which, was, which was pretty instructive. And, and oh. this guy's on your plane. Because if he hadn't told me that, I mean, not that somebody else might not have been able to communicate that to me, but this guy at the snack bar knew because he was always coming through to speak to kids about survival. So um, anyway, that was, that was my favorite day. That's awesome. I, I knew, it's funny. <laughs> I knew that Koji would know about that. Because Koji, uh, so you know more than me. What she was talking about when she said that? Were you kind of had an idea of what she was saying? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I mean, it, it's a really, it's a really famous. Uh, so famous wait, thing. And, and my friend, and like I said, literally, my friend, my friend's writing a movie. My friend's writing a movie for Japan. So or, smart. It's a so Japanese smart. American production, like a co-production kind of thing. But he was, he was, and, and I've, I've, I've looked into because I, one of my, I teach at UCLA. Um, oh, okay. And, and one of my students was actually pitching me the story. I was like, wait, you could do it, yeah. but I'm just thinking somebody else is already, <laughs> <laughs> somebody else is already writing this. I'm so glad I did this addition because like I should have just looked all this up and I did several years ago it's just the facts part the emotion the feeling the feeling of seeing him will stay with me forever like wow. the feeling of in inspiration the feeling of all of that um the fact that he wouldn't talk about what he ate like interesting because I, I didn't know why I, I I didn't know if he had like if there was a cannibalism I didn't know what the deal was like I didn't know oh, what you, why you know? I, I've never heard of cannibalism because I mean he it must be because he stole and he. Felt I think he stole or? and he. I mean because he stole like because there's farm. It was like far. It was rural, right? It was like yeah, foresty right. rural area, so he could steal right. like animals and stuff. But I think that I mean that was and the farmers would shoot at him or you know there'd be like oh, yeah. conflict because he's stealing stuff from these people right. and yet right and, to eat and, yeah but... to eat and then and then they kind of like wow. yeah and I think that's how one of the guys got killed was on a raid. That's what I think. I mean, I, I haven't done a lot of research on these guys, but I so remember. So the 70s? It went to the 70s? It went all the way to the 70s. Can you imagine being so that that's guy? What I had seven, I've been, been telling people back. seven years. Oh, sorry. Go can ahead. Imagine, I was going to say, can you imagine being that guy and having your commander come in and say the war's been over 30 years? Could you imagine the process he goes through in his brain? You're like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> it, it, yeah. it, just, it just goes to show how, how, how much propaganda and how much brainwashing was going on in, in Japan yeah. during the, before the war and kind of that, yeah. that whole, because I mean, all the schooling wasn't real schooling. It was just, you know, like, love your emperor, like, love this <laughs> yeah, country, yeah. like Nazis, yeah. right? I mean, Japan was yeah. the Nazis of, of, of Asia. So, right, right. You know, I, I think well, just, well, no, I mean, Magas have not done what the Nazis or the Japanese yeah. did. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm talking about you know you yes. to love to love your emperor, you know. Trump. Yeah, but 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 no, this was like in school. You know, this was yeah. like the like. I mean, there yeah. he was seen as a god, literally, yeah. and so you know, like the like it, it makes sense. I mean, that's why the Japanese soldiers were killing themselves, right? And right, yeah. right, right, you know, they were like right. they were they were so brave. I mean, they were uh, there's there's really great stories of Japanese Americans who were on the obviously on the American side, and they were you know they were talking to trying to tell the Japanese citizens. On a lot of these islands, to not kill themselves, like cause a lot of women uh, were just running off the cliffs, to dying at the end of the uh, war, because they thought that was going to be really bad for them, because like they're just going to get raped or killed and stuff by the yeah, Americans. Yeah, 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 and all yeah, these yeah, Japanese yeah. American soldiers were like, "Don't do it! Don't do it! We'll, we, we'll you'll be treated fine. We'll give you food." Well, but they were uh, still like doing it, you know. I mean, that's just, yeah. it's, just brain, it's just brainwashing, you know. Brainwashing. It's, just, it's like a cult, right? And yeah, then you go yeah. into like, you oh, know, like sad. I, yeah, it's really sad. It's really sad, and also people. You know, I, people that feel so there's a weird there's a like weird comparison to Trump in that you know I didn't realize how out of touch I was with how many people, especially in the middle of the country and farmlands, were so unbelievably disenfranchised that they would feel so desperate that they would vote for someone who was telling them lies about like you know your jobs are going to come back, coal mining is going to come back, yeah. like all this stuff is just it's not going to go overseas. It's like we can do it here, and it's like. I didn't quite, I, I mean, I, I yeah, I, 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 this, this, this period of time is about everybody reevaluating what they know for real and what they need yeah. to be way more woke on. Well, but even, like, even Andrew Yang, though, had the same, um, had the same epiphany. Like, he started this uh, yeah. nonprofit where in each of these, like, rural communities, he'd start, like, an incubator for entrepreneurs. And it was like oh. this thing he did all around the country, in this, like, in the South and the Midwest and stuff. But then oh, wow. in the middle of it, he realized... Yeah. He realized that winning or being successful yeah. meant that you would take your job and go to San Francisco or take your job uh -huh. and, go to, and to take your company and go to New York, take your company and go to LA. Like, and it was right. like, it was never like stay in Iowa. And like right. the success was like moving there, making like a, having your company go from, you know, 1 million to $50 million. And all of a sudden, like, and, and he saw that happen, but then he'd realize all those jobs that he created were just moving to it's San just Francisco. going over to the place there, going, yeah. And he's like, this is not going to, like, like that was part of his, like, this is not going to work anymore. And so it's the same yeah. realization of being like, this is, this is just not, 
like like you can't have all the you know all the people all the business and money go to these like four or five cities right on the yeah coast. yeah so it's like that it's like i'm you know being aware of the vulnerability of a people that are so broken that they'll listen to that kind yeah. of yeah. cultish sort of this is your you know uh, somebody guidance somebody to tell them what to do or to give them some structure when it's so crazy out of control and they're desperate so I, oh everything's hard but how many hours <laughs> how many hours did you spend on the island total what was the probably oh, eight or nine hours, yeah probably eight probably eight or nine actually i don't know i can't remember it was it was just um it was so beautiful island? and i oh, okay. also said coach do you know the island no, I, I've never. Made I've never. It, it, it's stunning, and and if you look it up, there's still there's a little bit more you can find. There's like a tourist page now that is a little bit more, but there's so and it sounds like it's like a little bit more developed, but it was so beautiful. But when I tell people that that was one of that was my favorite day, when I think of my favorite day, it's like there's not another human I love in it. I mean, it's like what is wrong? There's landmines. There's like I'm just there's glad you did like, not step on landmines. Yeah, yeah we're this. Or the snake. I looked up the Habu snakes. They mean business. They will screw you, you up. Did you see it? No, I didn't. But and also, I don't know if this is a thing or this is just a, you know, a, the me thing or girl thing or whatever. But I'm just like, I assumed that as soon as it rains, the snakes are going to come out. I don't know. Do snakes come out in the rain? I don't know what snakes do. Like, I, I don't Ooh, know what they're dealing with. Really. Oh, okay. Because I just was like, it started to pour, so I assumed snakes. <laughs> like, I, <just> like, <laughs> I wish that I could have seen the look on those two girls' faces when this <laughs> six-foot blonde girl comes out of nowhere. <laughs> you would have died. You would have died because they they were the most lovely two ladies, but they looked like they had seen a ghost. I mean, they were just like, oh, and I, I was soaking wet. I mean, because I had been walking in the rain, the pouring rain for three hours. So none of me made sense. And I am sure I didn't have a raincoat. Do you know what I mean? Because <laughs> it was like, I am sure I was just, everything I had was soaking, but they just kind of looked up. They didn't seem like, they, they didn't seem like fear, but they just felt like they were, they, they were dreaming. It just, like, <laughs> I've never seen someone look at me that, that way of like, it just happened. <laughs> uh, what, what year, what year was this? What, when was this? Uh, it was, it was long ago. It was probably, let's see, 1994, 95, 96, 97, 98, 98 to oh, 98. 2000, okay. 2000. It was actually, yeah, it was probably like in that zone. Um, okay. Oh, wow. And what do you, what else do you actually remember? Probably, two, probably 2000. What else do you remember from that trip to Japan? Was there anything that you remember from that trip or is this the... <laughs> uh, no, no, I remember, let's see. I, I, it was incredible. It was, a, it was an incredible trip. I remember, um, <laughs> this is a little TMI, <laughs> but I remember, no, I remember Hokone. <laughs> there was like Hokone where it was like, you have the sulfur springs and the boiling of eggs. I remember it's like my one nude photo it was like i was in the i was in the place and my friend took a picture and my friend's friend took a picture and i'm like oh that's out there now <laughs> it, was just, it was free the internet but we were all like taking pictures because we were on this uh, we had this um uh onsen is it called an onsen onsen, uh, onsen, yeah. onsen onsen um i also remember from that onsen it was like, with the, just the loveliest people and we were with this um woman i don't even remember it was i guess my friend who was studying at to todai uh she was her friends that were showing us around so they took us to this onsen and so it smelled like sulfur so it smells like eggs so you're just like it's a little it's beautiful but you're a little bit and then they bought and this was pre me being into i was a little bit into sushi but not super adventurous they brought us wasabi ice cream sandwiches and we were on a very windy road like and it smelled like eggs and i was like oh, a little bit overwhelmed by everything but there, was, <laughs> there was just this there was um this beautiful I don't know. I'm curious because it felt there's the, the Midwest sometimes gets in trouble because I hear people say that like there's a niceness and there is like my brother's wife and family is so incredibly nice and it's just genuine. But I hear sometimes like jokes about how sometimes there could be a niceness, but then sometimes what they really feel is is underneath it. L.A. gets gets in trouble for this, too. Right. In Japan, I just felt like there was this level of kindness and politeness that didn't feel like i didn't feel the undercurrent of it and like oh, i remember i went to oh go ahead it's just a cultural thing it's it's, it's a cultural thing it, yeah, it was so because because no no well it, it's a language thing because think it, like yeah because you're a writer you understand like yeah yeah like if, if, if i was standing in your way yeah. there's not there's no words that say get the hell out of my way or get out of my way the the way the language would be is it would be nice if yeah. everybody thought about 
everybody else and would go to the side so other people could walk. Oh. So it's just really like, it's, but it's kind of passive aggressive. Ah, all right. You know, I like you know, that. Really, I want a little right? bit of edge under there. Yeah, yeah. like it, it's a like I mean, it's like it's like a Japanese boss comes in a room and says like it would be really nice if I could photo if I could get these copies photocopy, but he wouldn't tell his assistant photocopy these. And so it's really like that's why it's really weird you. about the Japanese culture. So like if you don't know what they're like really saying, it's like yeah, yeah. like everyone's really nice, but the right. moment you like understand what's going on, you're like oh that was like a slight. Get it. So yeah. I was just in a zone of yeah. oblivion. Probably, <laughs> but let me, but I'll tell you this one. I'll tell you this one. I'll, um, although well, two things. One is my friend who's blonde and uh, she was studying electrical engineering. She went to MIT and then she went to Todai and then MIT. And now I think she's like CIA or something because she never tells me what she does. <laughs> she's, uh, she, she's, uh -oh. she's, a she's a genius. She, I, 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 don't, I, I don't know where she is now, but she would, what happens is we would get on the um, trains. Oh, I'm sorry, I got a million Japanese memories, but I remember there were the pushers that would like push you on the train during rush hour so they could close the door. It was the coolest thing ever. But Aww. I remember she would hear people talking about the two blonde people because she spoke perfect Japanese. So she would constantly tell me. And like it was, nothing was that, nothing was that bad. Um, yeah. But I was gonna tell you two things on that. Well, one was I remember being in the train and there definitely were moments of this, which was fascinating, because I went to the red light district and saw like pretty crazy things, <laughs> you know, yeah. like, um, so there were some, there felt like there was a very kind of buttoned up culture, but also just a lot getting out, uh, unlike America with like violence, but there was like through, um, through stories and through literature and through anime and through all this stuff, like reading about things that, cause I remember sitting next to somebody who just this older, like must've been in his eighties gentleman. And his was looking at the most violent, hardcore, like porn on the train. <laughs> just like, just flipping through, you know what I mean? It was just like, but it was like the loveliest looking man. And he, he wasn't like in my face about it. I was just like, I was just like, this is amazing. So it felt <laughs> the dichotomy between yeah incredible politeness and that other stuff of just being a human has to come out somewhere and it just comes out in a better way than it does in america you know yeah. well, it's, different. I mean, it's, it's just felt, different felt like right. it's just different yeah. it's different, I think it's just... it's different but it's not it's, there's not guns there's not like yeah. it, it, unless it's changed it's not coming out against other people yeah. it's like an internal i mean i know i'm making a huge huge generalization but like it just felt like there was less acting out on some of those things and more of a fantasy element of it or no i no, no, I, no, I mean japan's like the safest place i mean i, I don't feel it i don't feel safer anywhere in the world than japan yeah. but I mean, you know there yeah. there is crime and the police do i mean if you get if you're in the police station you're gonna get arrested and convicted no matter if you did oh. or not right so it's like, oh, okay. they, right. like that's why that's why they catch everybody is because they um you know, because the high conviction rate, they, they get everybody, right? yeah, they get <laughs> but, um, everybody. but, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's really interesting. It's very weird, but, but thank you so much. I mean, I, I sure, love yeah, this sure. has been great. This has oh, been wait, great. can I tell you one more quick thing? I know we're probably yes. way over time. No, it's fine. Uh, I go did, it, go, did go to a house. I did go to a house of this woman who is a, a friend from Pasadena's friend. Um, and this was the kind of thing that I experienced a lot. I said, oh my gosh, they had like a, a cabinet, that a glass cabinet and some beautiful things. And I, lo I looked at this dish and I was like, that's amazing. They're like, you must have it. And, and I felt like there were times where I would go to a house and I would say something. So I stopped complimenting people because I felt like I was going to walk away with one of their kids. It'd be like, your child is very lovely. Here you go. I mean, I felt like you would say that you liked something and it was given to you. And it might, there might have felt, a, I didn't sense a pressure. I didn't sense that they felt like they had to. It felt like they wanted to, and I just stopped complimenting things because <laughs> I just was going to take everybody's every It's a cultural culture. thing. Because yeah. okay. when people come to my house and they, they like things, I'm like, hey, do you want it? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, Koji, Koji hasn't given me his kid yet. He knows I yeah. love his kid. Yeah. <laughs> that's just weird, though. <laughs> yeah, that seems weird. No, I'm that's, that's, that's weird, weird. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, not, You not shouldn't like, get to have his kid. You shouldn't Yeah, because no. you, you, you could have my physical things, but not like people because okay you know what yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, can, can, can i share one real quick story yeah, about yeah. so i was in bali and like the only reason i thought I about this was, was because of your your story about being naked yeah, yeah, was yeah, like yeah. um it was me and my girlfriend and my best friend and my girlfriend's yeah. best friend and like yeah. my girlfriend's best friend and my best friend hated each other but they decided for some reason to do like a like a couple's massage thinking that it's, it's way cheaper <laughs> So they did yeah. a couple's massage, but in a couple's massage, they get both get naked in a couple. Like they both yes. take together. They take, yes. you know, like they do everything naked together. <laughs> and so they had to take, they, so like in the middle of the shower, I was like, wait, 
that means our friends are naked together. <laughs> and so they had to take a shower together. They had to get a massage That's together. Weird. The shower part, yeah, you're like covered. And, yeah. But the shower part is so weird. Wait, right? wait, like, wait, wait, wait. What? Is yeah, like, shower together? Well, in Asia, like they must, they they they, they must, they like shower you, yeah, and like they, yeah. they you know, like clean they you, wash you down, and scrub you. No, no, no I get, I just, yeah. uh, who wants that job? But they're, but they're a couple. If you're a couple, though, like it doesn't matter. You're like I've but seen. They weren't a couple. Yeah, yeah. But they weren't a couple. But they wanted it cheaper, so they went together. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole time I was like getting, I was like, wow, this is this is gonna be amazing. super uncomfortable for them. Yeah. And then I talked to the, I talked to my friend. He's like, yeah, I couldn't look over there. And she didn't look over there. <laughs> And it's like the most awkward like, situation. He instantly regretted taking that shower, didn't he? Yeah. Well, they, they regretted like they should. I was like, you should just. I mean, it, in Bali it was cheap. I don't know when you went, but I wasn't like around 2000. And they're oh, super cheap. cheap. And I was oh, like, well, so cheap. you could have just paid like five bucks more and got it by yourself. And, like, uh, <laughs> it, uh, like, uh, it wasn't like, you know, like a hundred dollars or something. Right? Well, for another, if I'm ever on the show again, if I get time for a second best day, I got rice, yeah. I got stitches in a rice patty in Bali. And that oh. was actually one of my better days too. You got what? <laughs> stitches? <laughs> stitches. Right. Stitches in a rice, in a rice patty. patty in Bali by a doctor who I'll just tell you that he showed me a needle that was um, covered. Uh, and I did, he didn't speak English, of course, because why should he? But like, he was like, see, see, and I was like, okay. And he goes, see, no AIDS. And I was like, oh, yeah, no, if there's an option, I'll have no AIDS. I'll have no AIDS. If there's two, if there's two packages. Did he use anesthesia on you? He was trying to tell me. He didn't have enough because he used it the night before. I mean, I was in the I was in a rice paddy in the middle of nowhere, and a girl had hurt herself the night before, so he didn't have enough. So there's a plastic surgeon on the trip from Australia that sewed me up because she brought her own sutures. And, uh, but I didn't have anesthetic, so I bit on a rafting shoe. I bit down, and there was a guy that I liked that I was holding his hand. Like <laughs> during it, that was the only that was the only nice part. It wasn't the towel though, right? No, no. Well, <laughs> anyway. well we, should def- we should definitely bring yes. you on. Oh, uh, in, yeah. In the for future. Sure. And, and maybe we could yeah, do like, we could even do a best or worst of, of your of your another part, or you could do best or worst of maybe movies or TV or something. As well. Oh, That'd be great that. to hear. anything. I yeah. have, and I have some worst that are pretty, yeah, I have like an OCD story because I'm super OCD where it was pretty bad. So I have like, I have, but I, they're always humor in the bad ones, and I block out some of the worst parts of it so <laughs> I can make it somewhat entertaining. So, oh, God, this has been great. Uh, thank Jen, you, guys. Thank you so much <laughs> that was so fun. On. That was so uh, fun. I needed this. With everything, and I'm sure Cody needed it, too, with everything oh. that's been going on. It's so great to talk to you guys. Yeah, it just feels like normal for an hour, right? It just feels yeah. like you just human human interaction and i'm gonna uh, stop telling koji how cool i think this kid because now it just sounds creepy yeah it does no it creepy. doesn't he like he knows he knows no, he's <laughs> you, know, you just love you just love it it's like <laughs> is it, he loves he loves all kids so, is, there, is it, a boy is it a son or a daughter it's a it's a son he does um he uh, does uh jujitsu with uh, yeah, with uh my son with his son yeah. oh you told me about him Mark. Yeah. you didn't tell me you wanted to steal him i don't think no i really don't i'm so i was just talking but about he adores him <sighs> He just thinks he's badass. Uh, he didn't ask Martin, I, when Martin lights up about somebody, it's like, you have that with, um oh, the girl with the gorgeous name. Um, Tina. Tina? No, oh, no, no. Um, Marisol. Patrice. Marisol, yeah. Yeah, Marisol. When awesome. you talk about her, you just light up. And when you talk about Koji's son, you light up too. Yeah, I remember now. You yeah. think you've, yeah. Yeah. That makes me uncomfortable. I don't know. I no, know. it should make you, when your kid goes out in the world, the fact that he has such a great effect on, you know, humans. Yeah. Jen, do you know oh. anything about um, restraining orders or anything? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. Think about it. Yeah, so sad. Cody's being so dead, man. I'm starting to feel guilty. Like, wait, I really don't. No, 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 no. <laughs> You're perfect, Martin. Mom, my son, my son is able to beat me in jujitsu now. So yeah, um, so he's, he's already like good. He's, he's, so like, good. he's actually like like jokingly like I, I I like I'm pretending not to try. But then, like later, like at, at night, the other night, my wife was like, "Wait, you were trying, right?" I was like, "Yeah, yeah. I was secretly trying." And he was like, "He was he was like faster and better than me." I mean, I'm ultimately stronger still. Right, but right, right. Just, I, I was like, "Wow." You this just is... have to. Sh- you just can't show that you're trying. He has you have to keep it from him that you're trying. Yeah, yeah. For a while. No, I, I haven't he'll, told he'll him. Say, that. He's gonna sense that soon though too, and that's the day you're screwed. Oh, he's already he's already <laughs> he's already figured that out. But yeah, yeah, oh, shoot. The other day, he actually figured. He's like, "Wait." I, he's like, I beat you. I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> 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 but, anyway. well, 
Please, please rate, review, subscribe to our podcast. I will. I will. Yes. I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> not, not just you, but everybody. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jen, um, Jen, one more thing. To I have things. subscribed and I have rated, but uh, but but. Is there anyway, is there anyway? You you don't have a you don't do a podcast. You know, or I have Facebook. A... I have Facebook. I can I can put. Uh, no, no, I mean, I people, can... people, people, if people want to like you know follow you. Do you, you know. You don't do a daily post. God, like that, right? I okay. suck. I'm just so worried because I, I'm because I'm the worst. I'm the most. I get super distracted because of ADD and writing that I don't have a lot of social media. But I need we'll to start, start it up just, just yeah. to support people that are awesome. Even just for that, I need and, to start and support it up. you too because you, you. If anyone out there needs supporting, it's you. You're, you're amazing. Yeah, oh, thanks. You really Thank are. you. You're That's so nice of you. You really are. <laughs> All right. But <laughs> Please rate, review, subscribe to our podcast. Please let people yes. know about it. And thank you for, thank you, Jen, and thank you, Mark. Facebook, Instagram. Thank you, guys. Uh, follow us, so please. fun. It's awesome yeah. what you're oh, doing geez. here. I'm, I'm so glad. I'm so glad this one happened because I've been dying for this one for months, literally. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, me too. So, <laughs> great. You look great. Look thank you, guys. All right. Uh, All right. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>